Hello and welcome to another episode of It Came From The Page. Ow. And today we are talking about my 10 favorite short stories that I read in 2022. Now, I read just about just under 20 short story collections. I absolutely adore short story collections. I honestly think looking at this list, you can probably tell more about me from what makes this list than you can any other of the top tens that I'm doing this year. Uh, I do think that a lot of these short stories are some of the best things that I've read all year and probably would like top any of the full-on books books I read. And I think, you know, you'll find there are some themes in this as we go into it, but uh, it's interesting. It's interesting. I, I think the short stories are an absolutely wonderful way of collecting and introducing people to topics and ideas in such unique ways that really kind of dive to the heart of certain topics and uh, can be really emotional if they're done right. So without further ado, let's get into it. So a few guidelines before we get into this. One, uh, obviously this is going to be a subjective list. Uh, you will see people that I know on this list, people I'm friends with on this list. I'm sorry, I don't believe true objectivity in art exists. I think everything that matters about what makes talking about books and what makes booktube fun is the subjective nature of all of our different experiences and tastes and how that comes out in the way that we talk and experience books. So I can't go back and say, this is an objective view. I can't, I can divorce knowing these people from my opinions. Obviously, I can't do that. No one can really do that. Uh, I still do think that these are amazing stories. And I also think that um, I have read things by friends that I uh, didn't like. So, uh, you know, uh, not not any booktube friends. So I'm not, not talking about anyone in booktube in particular. But I have had experiences and, and stories and things shown to me by friends in my real life. And I have not liked them. So, you know, it doesn't, it's not like a, a cure-all. <laughs> it's not like, oh, I know this person. Therefore, you know, it's a good book. And it's like, no, it's not like that. And if there were any books or stories by people I knew that I didn't like, I just wouldn't talk about them. Uh, so I do think that these particular stories will strike a chord but i just wanted to get up front and say that up front objectivity is a lie anyone who talks about it i don't believe them all art is subjective that's why it's art so let's get into it and uh, yeah we're getting into that right away uh for my number 10 and this is it's my job which is by pax panic and this was in the collection lurking in the dark which was a horror tube anthology uh, so the way that I did this when I was talking about all these books, I didn't double up on any authors. So if I read a, a short story collection by a specific author and I liked multiple stories, I had to pick just one. But I was allowed to pick multiples from certain collections if they are of different authors. So just so you know as we get into this. Uh, so this was my number 10. And I was actually going to film this video a few weeks ago. Uh, and, uh, you know, since making this list... Uh, our dear friend Pax, who is not only a terrific writer, has uh, recently uh, received a pretty harrowing diagnosis of cancer. And uh, there is a GoFundMe to kind of help to raise money for the funds uh, as the American uh, Medical Association is just, it's bad. It's bad uh, and can be really expensive uh, for people who just need these services for their life. So I will put that GoFundMe in the bottom of here uh and i just think pax is such a wonderful person pax was the very first person to really start commenting and start supporting me on booktube right at, right from the start if you go back to my earliest videos you'll no doubt see a comment from pax and pax has just been a light in all things and i think that you know Aside from just being a wonderful content creator and a wonderful friend, she's also a wonderful writer. I absolutely adore this short story, and I think it's one of those things that, you know, it's just, it floored me. I, I, I you know, I didn't expect her to be a bad writer by any means, but the, the amount of uh, depth and heart in this story really strikes me. Uh, and really hit me down to the core. I reread this one before recording this video. I just wanted to refresh some of these stories in my mind just to make sure that, you know, did they have the same impact when I read them again? And this one did, 100%. Uh, this is all from the perspective of a dog, and it is this dog who's 
you know, looking after this lady and trying to stop something from happening and some creature from getting in. And it's written in such a unique perspective. I think it's really hard to even write from the human perspective half the time. So managing to write a believable perspective of a dog is just outstanding, especially, uh, I believe this is Pax's first published work. And yeah, this is just, this is just a fantastic story with a lot of depth in it and a lot of uh, heart-wrenching scenes. Like, I cried again. Like, it's, it moved me to tears uh, and it was very powerful as a story and just really kind of gets to that core of what it means to love our pets and uh, the love that they show back to us uh, because they do. They love us back. And, uh, yeah, Whew. It's, a, it's an emotional one. Uh, we love you, Pax. You got this. Uh, next up, number nine, this is, uh, it, it's no surprise, uh, this is a uh, alien and predator's tale, because of course it is. It, if you saw me, you and you've seen any of my channel, you knew he's going to be posting something from uh, one of those collections. And uh, rest assured, of course I am. This is Hotel Mariposa, which is written by David Barnett. And this was actually in the newest short story collection. Aliens vs. Predator, Ultimate Prey. Uh, David Barnett also wrote an alien book this year, which was uh, Alien Colonial War. I did not like that book very much. I was not a big fan of that book, but I love this short story. And it's just, it's one of those very interesting things about writers who, in certain formats, you really like their work, in other formats, you don't especially like it. But this was, this is basically this tale of these people who are like ghost hunters like you know think of that typical like you know ghost reality show and they go to this like haunted hotel to film the real episode of the reality show and it turns out the reason why this hotel is quote unquote haunted and is like a, a ghost hotel is because a predator ship crash landed and it had technology that's just kind of messing with the space time around that specific ship and like altering all of the typical things you see in like a haunted hotel like you know quarters that stretch on and on and on and like you know these very specific kind of like tropes of a haunted house but it's caused by this crash predator ship and one of the things that's interesting about this is that it kind of like divides like the way people experience things and the way people are experiencing time and the way people are able to communicate and like how life experiences can kind of meld and what happens is the predator is doing a hunt in this location because it's such a odd place geographically that it makes the hunt that much more intense so there is an alien who is uh, infected like one of the crew gets infected by an alien and the the predator's hunting the alien down but there is this really heartfelt core to this in regards to like the predator and the way that it kind of associates with the main character who our main female character in such a way that has like such an emotional depth to it which i was not expecting from this book and i think this idea is great just as like a a, a setting for like a, a fun action story but it goes more than that and it does more than just create like a fun setting. It really does take all of the elements of that setup and uses it so well in a, in a way that again, uh, listen to me, I'm going to say it again, made me cry. So there you go. Bam, 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 bam. That's what happens. Uh, the next one is a, a story that is really unique and is not something I was expecting at all. This is from the anthology Dead Man's Hand, which is a Western, a Weird West anthology. And this particular story is called The Golden Age by Walter John Williams. So this is a love letter to the golden age of comic books written through this like old Weird West template. And what happens is they create all of these, like, you know, you got like a Batman-esque character and like a Joker-esque character and like all, but all these characters who are clearly indicative of very specific tropes and ideas that were explored in the golden age uh, of comic books. But what's really fun is that this story continues on and the way that it continues is it kind of just gives you an entire 
history of how comics changed. And it does that through the lens of this really fun and inventive story that is like this Wild West Batman-esque tale. But it tells you how comics changed and what different eras brought to the genre. That it's almost like a mini history lesson, but it's also a very fun story. And it's super unique and, and just unexpected. And I just had a, I had a great time with it. So yeah, that one is just pure, it, just pure enjoyment from my end is uh, The Golden Age. Next up, I did read two uh, short story vo- collections by the ever-lovely uh, Clive Barker. So I read Books of Blood Volume 1 and Books of Blood Volume 4. Why did I skip 2 and 3? I'll get to them eventually. I'm not exactly sure why. Uh, it's just what I had in front of me. So, uh, you know, the first volume of Books of Blood was like a five-star read, and all the short stories are amazing. Uh, but weirdly enough, the one I'm choosing to put on here for my Clive Barker uh, representation um, is Body Politic, which is the first story from Books of Blood Volume 4. And what I love about this short story is that it shows that a talented writer can make even the most ridiculous sounding premise really, really good. And I think that, you know, this is just the, the tantamount example of that. So the, the basis plot of this story is that a man's hands are sentient and they're plotting against him. That's the plot is essentially his hands come alive and they want to remove themselves from the man who, who, who they are attached to. And it is kind of this body horror in a way that is just such a, so fascinating and it on its outset if you just if i just told you that plot you'd be like that's fucking stupid like that's really sounds dumb but clive barker writes the hell out of it and ends up with an extremely exciting and also horrifying uh horror tale and it's just the the tantamount example of taking a premise that seems ridiculous but executing it so well that you know you just fall in love with it and it had to make this list. So the body politic. Oh man. So good for books of blood volume four. Next up, this is number six. This is from Ray Russell and his short story collection, haunted castles, which has some of the best Gothic tales you'll ever read. Uh, and this one. So I thought I was excluding novellas from this list. Some people call this a novella. If this is a novella, whatever. I still really like this book. Uh, I still really like this story. And this is Sardonicus by Ray Russell. It is so funny. Is Before this year, I had no idea that Mr. Sardonicus was a character from literary fiction. I just thought it was something that William Castle... Sorry. That William Castle made up to make like a, a cool movie about. Because in the in the I believe it was the fifties there was a William Castle movie called Mister Sardonicus, and I just thought it was a retro horror film. I had no idea it was based off of uh, an actual short story, and I believe it was Michael K. Vaughn in one of his videos uh, talked about this short story collection. And uh, during the Halloween season, I got to it and, and listened to it, and my God, I loved it! I loved this short short story collection, and I loved this short story. Uh, I listened to this on audiobook format. That might have made the difference as to like it sticking in my head so much because it's performed so well in that audiobook. Uh, but this is just like the quintessential gothic tale, and just like it, it narrows down all the little ins and outs that make gothic such a fun genre which is like the sense of place this sense of character this foreboding atmosphere these amazing descriptions of this castle and oh everything i love about gothic tales are just kind of like squeezed into this tale and this tale has a lot of depth to it and a lot of interesting twists and turns and it's very disturbing by the end and I, yeah, I just, I loved it. I loved it. It's such a wild tale. Gets pretty damn dark. Uh, and is just quintessential gothic storytelling. So, absolutely loved that one. 
Next up, this is by Robert R. McCammon, the always amazing Robert R. McCammon. I have not read a Robert R. McCammon books I didn't like as of yet. I know some of his super early stuff uh, is a bit hit and miss with people, but I do think Robert R. McCammon is one of the big standouts for me in terms of writers this year. Uh, this is one of the first times I've discovered um, him as a, as a writer and really dived into his work. And, uh, yeah, I've, I've just loved everything I got, uh, with him. And, uh, he is probably not, I don't think he's as, as masterful with telling short stories. I don't think all of his short stories are amazing, but I recently read Blue World and my favorite of that entire thing, aside from the titular novella Blue World, which I know is a novella, so I didn't include that one, but that's an amazing story. Uh, but I loved Night Calls the Green Falcon by Robert R. McCammon because this is written in such a unique way because it is the story about this guy who used to be a star of serials, uh, if you don't know what serials are, back in the early, early days uh, of cinema, you would go to watch like a movie, and before you watch the movie, you would see probably a, it could, like a 20-minute short film about some character doing something, and it usually would be like a superhero or an action star, and every serial every episode of a serial would end with this cliffhanger that was like oh you have to come back tomorrow to see what's next how does he get out of this and how does this happen so you know you'd be you'd be watching the green hornet and he'd be flying off a cliff and he's tied up and it's like well the green hornet escaped the death trap tune in next time to find out so people would kind of go back to the theater to figure out whoa does he escape uh and What's amazing is that this is a story about a star of serials and the way that McCammon writes this short story is it's split into to chapters that are all end like a serial would end. So he wrote this like a serial, but this is a story about this guy who used to be a serial star and he had a mental breakdown after all, all of these kids died. Uh, he was like, he went to, a, like I believe he was at like a, an orphanage or something like performing for kids and a fire started and he couldn't save them and he wanted to save them and he just had a mental breakdown. Um, and this takes place in, I believe it's the 80s. Uh, and he's, I think it's like 80s New York. It's pretty like grimy, grimy, like real world setting. And he lives in this like low rent tenement building. He's just like a janitor now. Uh, his glory days are behind him. He's kind of just waiting out life until it's it's over. And he befriends this woman in this building who, a serial killer, like attacks her uh, and, and murders her. And all of a sudden, his response to this is to put back on his old costume from the serial and try to track down the killer. And it is really, really fun. Uh, it's also pretty damn dark. It's also exciting. It's super well written and unique. And he meets all of these various characters throughout this adventure. And all, all of these characters have all this richness to them uh, and this, this heartfelt nature to them. And I just absolutely adored this story. Uh, Night Calls the Green Falcon fucking rules. My number four... This is Joe Hill, his short story collection, Full Throttle. I know this is not his most popular short story collection. Um, he has one before this, but this is just the one that I think I found on Libby and was like, hey, what the heck? And uh, I love this short story collection. Full Throttle is such a good collection. It's amazing. Um, all of these stories have a richness to them, uh, but my favorite, bar none, was this little short story called Late Returns. Late Returns is not really a horror story at all. It's basically a story about a guy who works at this bookmobile, and this bookmobile occasionally finds itself out of time. And what happens is, when a person is going to die, before they die, they if they, they find this bookmobile, whatever time period it is that they're, they're destined to die soon, they find this bookmobile, and they get out one last book before they die so that they can read it and understand uh, an element of their lives that they might not have known about. So, for example, there is this, this older woman who her son would write 
uh, an amazing story, but she would pass away before she was able to read it. And through the shenanigans of this time tra traveling uh, bookmobile, she was able to have that experience of being able to read her son's writing before she died. And, you know, it's just this amazing, uh, heartfelt magic power of libraries, essentially, and human connections. And, you know, it it got me down in the feels. My heart, my heart was affected by this book. Uh, I found it very touching, very sweet, uh, very meaningful. I just had a great time with it. And I think Joe Hill has a, such a unique writing style. I mean, yes, he does write a lot like his, his father, Stephen King, but there is enough differences between the two that I think that, you know, you can uh, you can see the elements of his father in there, but you can also see uh, his own uh, touches and elements to them as well. Uh, and I think a story like this really proves that is that it's just, whew, it's good. It's good. I loved it. And again, another one that made me cry. Uh, short stories give me emotional, y'all. Uh, number three, coming on the top three. Uh, so this is <laughs> number three and number two actually are kind of very similar short stories. Uh, and this is where we're going to get to like, mm, I know a little bit more about you than I did before, Andrew, which is fine. Uh, this one is The White King's Dream by Elizabeth A. Lynn from the short story collection Shadows 2. Ho, ho, ho. This one hits you in the, the emotions if you've been through a lot of health stuff. So this is a story that is mainly told from the perspective of a woman in an old age home who just wants to be let go to die. But all these machines and all these devices and these pills and everything's kind of just keeping her alive. So she's not able to die with dignity and she feels kind of trapped in her own body and it's just like this this if you've ever had anything um like seriously happen to you medical in in nature of the medical field uh you know this might hit you hard uh and it's just written really really well and really oh it hit me it hit me it hit you hard uh and really kind of makes you think about how you know how we treat the elderly, how we treat people who are, are in old age, how we treat people with specific disabilities, uh, you know, if, if they had been allowed the, the dignity of life um, and people still cared about them, they wouldn't want to die, obviously, right? I, of course, there's situations where you're in a lot of pain, right? And, you know, that's reasonable right the, to do what to want out and want to, to want to leave but the the idea of you know people are dying and we kind of just stuff them in a room until they live out the last nine ten years maybe at the high end of their lives just trapped in a room where no one really comes and visits them no one really cares to talk to them anymore and it's just one day after another of just like mind-numbing feeling of being trapped and you know, I don't know it's a very good story it's a very good story um and really kind of just talks about our you know we distance ourselves from old age we distance ourselves from death we don't really want to deal head on with the the realities of mortality which uh 100% leads me to my number two and uh my number two is goose from the short story collection Poking Holes, written by the wonderful, the lovely, plagued by visions, Juan Valencia. And, uh, yeah, this is kind of the uh, a very similar story to <laughs> The White King's Dream in that it really kind of captures what it's like to be at the end of your life. Uh, this one is... Uh, it's. I've heard people say this was a disturbing tale, and I... I disagree. I, but I, of course, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying, for me, the way that I read this story, it was a very sweet story. There's a lot of heartfelt emotion in this story. And, you know, it's a lot about, you know, dignity and death and what it means to feel alive and what it means to slowly disassociate with reality in a lot of ways, the absurdity of death. The absurdity of life. Like, yeah, I don't know. I think there's a lot in here. 
Uh, at the end of the day, I actually find this a relatively sweet story um, about finding some kind of dignity in death and feeling. And I don't know. It's my opinion, y'all. Y'all my opinion. I love this story. I reread it today. Still has the same emotional impact. A very powerful story. Uh, I absolutely love it. This one and my number one uh, just kind of switched back and forth, back and forth throughout this entire year. Um, I reread both of them and I'm like, they're both kind of on opposite sides of but like you know of, of how this year has gone for me where there's like a lot of goose is a very contemplative story about a story that kind of deals with like things like death like head on um and you know what it means to you know have a good death or what it means to die on your own terms whereas um titanium which is my number one story which is by alex the bookubus this is also from Looking in the Dark. So this is, Looking in the Dark was the only collection to get two spots on the top 10 and damn did it deserve it. Uh, this story is just hilarious. This is an amazing story. Uh, I laughed so hard the first time I read it and I read, I laughed so hard the second time I read it. Uh, I think that this is a story that really kind of takes serious topics and serious ideas but also is not afraid to revel in the absurdity of a situation. Uh, how to describe titanium? The story is essentially, um, I learned what a mammogram is. So uh, a woman goes to get a mammogram. Um, and uh, after the mammogram, she has a tentacle that can just come out of her boob and wreak havoc on uh, those who have wronged her. Uh, it is amazing. It is hilarious. It is just it, it is just everything I like from a, a, a story and storytelling. Uh, absolutely, my, my favorite short story of the year. Probably my favorite story of the year. The, my favorite anything of the year, to be perfectly honest. Uh, this is something I will be com continuously revisiting over the years. It has the ability to take a bad day and turn it good. And I just think uh, Alex has such a good style of writing. Uh, I know this was originally supposed to be a much more serious tale, uh, and she kind of decided to make a more absurdist and comedic take on it. Uh, and I, you can see that it would have. I think it would have been just as impactful had it been the other way around. Uh, but I do just love it the way that it is. Um, so it's one of those tales where you could see how this would be a tale you could tell in a very serious and dark way and a, and a tale that you could tell in a very hilarious way that just kind of revels in the absurdity. And I think, you know, there's a tendency, like I think comedy and horror are two things that are very closely intertwined in that they are both basic things that we can all kind of relate to. But when people try to talk critically about things, they're both thrown out. You know, horror gets a lot of flack from quote-unquote series critics and comedy gets that same level uh, of flack because you know it's people who don't understand that you know life's absurd and uh, i think that uh, this is one of those stories that really kind of gets to that you know i think there are elements uh, of those top three stories that are going to obviously kind of reflect on my own experiences in life so far titanium obviously i'm not having a mammogram but I had a, a medical procedure to put a hole in my, to fix a hole in my heart where there is like a literal, it's like a PFO. It's, it's what it's called where, uh, I had to be conscious for the surgery, by the way. Um, they drug me up, but I remember it all. And it was, it's wild. It's wild to be just staring at uh, the ceiling while people, uh, fuck with your heart. Anyways, uh, you know, uh, that's a fear for people, but anyways, it just happens. There was no choice. They had to be conscious while they did it. Uh, anyways, uh, but there's like a little piece of metal in my heart that is like getting rid of a hole that was there. Uh, so, you know, I kind of relate to that idea of, you know, something in your body there that wasn't there before. And it's just being like, well, this is just a part of me now. And uh, how do I deal with it? This is all kind of rather absurd and weird, but uh, and, and kind of like exploring that. Um 
a story like body politic even going down farther where it's about your hands betraying you well post stroke like this hand barely works half the time like this pain this hand is like in pain a lot and sometimes just doesn't listen um like it just won't do anything like my, my right side will just kind of completely shut down a lot of the time so you know there's elements of that that you can kind of like dwell into my own personal life um both goose and the white king's dream both take me back to that time where i was living in a hospital after having the stroke and being very unable to communicate anymore and what it feels like to live like that but also to find life again find feeling again where you're not able to feel anymore and i think that's like a story like goose really gets that well uh gets that through well is that you like the the idea of feeling back to being alive after going through a very serious thing but also that horror of that first day or two where you know i couldn't talk i had like a catheter in like it's just there's no dignity in life anymore it's just i wasn't able to communicate half my body just wasn't doing anything and it just i guess i'm just laying in a hospital bed right and you know those are my top 10 short stories of the year have you read any great short stories please let me know I uh, hope you guys have a great day, and uh, goodbye. Bye-bye.